Our goal is to do things that no other law firm has ever done before. Our technology brings the future to you today. We're the next era in the way legal transactions are handled. Perfect. Thank you for joining me, everyone. I want to thank our sponsor, Next Era Law Group, for today's upload. And today what we're going to be covering is a really cool program called Canva. Canva is a tool that it has, it's a mobile app that works on your Android and your iPhone. Um, it also works on desktop, so I'm showing you the desktop version. It's basically like a drag and drop editor that allows you to create your advertising. And as a real estate agent, we live in such a digital age that we're constantly having to create new marketing. Like if you post something on Facebook or Instagram or do a blog or any email marketing, it's very visual based. And not everybody who's in real estate is re good at designing anything. <laughs> so with Canva, it makes it a lot easier for you to do that. So what I'm going to do is I want to run through the program. I want to basically point out what all the different buttons are. I want to show you some of the designs that we've done in the past. I'm also going to cover where you can get some free um, images. Um, instead of you just going to Google and, and stealing images, I'm going to show you where you can get some free images. And then I'm also going to show you uh, where I pay to get some of my really high-end images. So let's take a look. This is Canva. Uh, we were just working on some we're hiring ads. So it would be our logo or your logo at the bottom right. On the bottom left would be all your real estate information. And this would be, say you have a team or you're growing um, and you want to post on Instagram or on Facebook, this style of image would work really well. It's really bold. Clearly you're talking about hiring. So we made a couple of variations of it. So I'll just kind of scroll down. We're hiring. I really like this one. Are you awesome? We are hiring. A megaphone blasting out, we're hiring. And this is more for the classic style of people. So it's really cool, drag and drop. I'm gonna get into actually building one out so you can see the process of me building out, but I should share with you the pricing of Canva first. Canva is totally free and they say free forever, which is awesome. So that's the version that most of you will want to be on. Some of you will want to pay, and if you do, it's at this current time of the video, it's $12.95 a month. And um, the really, there's a couple benefits that you get for it. The main ones would be that you can magically resize your designs. That's the main reason why I would upgrade or have anybody upgrade. So say I design something in for uh, Instagram ad, which is a perfect square, but I also want that to be used on Facebook, which is more of a rectangle you can press a button and it will magically redesign the thing for you. That's pretty cool. So if you are designing for multiple platforms at once, you might want to upgrade and pay for that. It also gives you access to millions of photos for a dollar each, which is cool. And it gives you exclusive access to free photos. So it's not really free because you have to pay $13 a month for it. But once you are paying for it, then you have a library of 300,000 images that you can use. Most of you, though, I'm going to suggest start with the free one, and if you ever need to pay, then you'll make that decision. But I would say 90% of the people are good to go with the free version of it. Now, there's a couple things. If you Google search Canva real estate business cards, it will come up with this link right here. I don't know how to find this directly through Canva, but if you Google search Canva, C-A-N-V-A, business cards, real estate. This link will come up. In the show notes, I'm going to email you guys this direct link. But when I come here and scroll down, look at all these business cards that they've already got designed. So you can just pick and choose one that works with you. So let's say I find a design that I like. I'll pick a simple one. Here, I'll just do this one. All you have to do is click on it. It opens up after you create a Canva account, so first of all, step one would be go to canva.com, create a free account. Then you could Google search real, real estate, uh, Canva real estate business cards. It came up with that page I just showed you. You can be like, oh, this one's pretty cool, and you'll hit edit this template. And then it builds the business card for you. Slowly. So there we go. So here's the logo up at the top left. Obviously, unless your name is PNH, then 
So let me close that. Then you're not going to want to have that logo, so you're going to click on it and hit the delete button. And then over on the uploads, over on the left at the bottom here, is where you can upload your logo. So you could hit this green button that says upload your own image. I've already got one uploaded, so I'll just click it and you drag and drop. Now when you do that, it's going to be pretty huge. So you can put your cursor at any of the corners and then scale it down. So I'm going to scale that down and then put it wherever you want. Obviously you would change the address. You can even change the font as well. So say I don't like this font. I could highlight all of that font there and then I could change it to Chewy. Or I could change it to whatever this is. So you can change the fonts based on your logo. If you're paying the $13 a month, then I think you can even upload your own fonts. That's another benefit to it. So you can change the color of things as well. So say I don't like the picture of this blue skyline. I can click on the blue skyline and there's a little toolbar that appears up at the top. Well, on the far left is the color palette. So I can change that and be like, yeah, you know what? My color is really more like a red. And you go with that. And then because that's red, maybe I want to change the font to be a black font so I can highlight all the text. And again, when you click on an object, it has its own little toolbar up along the top. I'll explain what they are. On the left is your font. The number represents the size, so if I want it to be a bigger font, I would make it like an 8, and it made it bigger. But I don't, so I want to make it a 6 again. If I want to change the color, it's kind of hard to tell. It's a white shadowed block box here, so I want to change that to black. If you want to um, use a custom color that you don't like any of these palettes here, you can hit the plus button. And then you can literally pick and choose any color on the color wheel. And if you know the number of the color, you can use that as well. So I'll just pick, um, I'll just leave it as that. Uh, going back to the font, you can make some of the some of the fonts have a bold and italic. Not all of them do, but some of them do. So if I want to make office, if I want to make that not bold, it's a little less bold than the text underneath it. Uh, you can change the, have it centered or left justified or right justified by hitting this. So if I want it on the right, see how it's all lined up on the right now? Or I can have it all lined up on the left. Same thing, just like Microsoft Word. Um, you can do bullet points as well if you wanted to. Uh, there's a couple other options if you want to copy something. So say you, you like the font and everything over here and you want to add more text, you can hit the copy button and that copied a box and I can put that box wherever I want it. So say maybe you have two different offices and then you have to change that line. And you can also change the transparency of things. So let me show you an example of that. I'm going to drag a photo. And I'm not, I wouldn't actually put this photo on this picture, but I just want to show you when I click on the photo and hit this little checker box, it changes the transparency. So now you can like see through it. Where that becomes really powerful, let me just make it big. Let's just pretend you have a listing. This is a, a just listed, for example. If I was to grab the text box, add a little bit of text, and I'll say just listed. Okay, so I'll put the text like that. See how hard that text is to read with the green trees and the, and the sky? It kind of pops over on the left, but it gets washed away and blended in with the trees. Well, what you can do is over on the left, there's all these different things. So I'll, I'll explain what each one is. Uploads is where you can upload all of your own photos. Backgrounds is if you want to change the background of the entire canvas. They have different um, textures or different colors if you want. You could add text, which I always just use this one, add a little bit of body text. These ones look really cool, like Blackbird. Drag and drop. It looks really cool, but you're forced to use the layout that they have. So maybe you don't want that block of text underneath. It kind of forces you to use it. So I don't necessarily use those too often, but you could. I mean, 
maybe you want to say love love real estate or something. So if they have designs already done for you, you can obviously use it. But what I like to do is uh, up at the top, it has add a little bit of body text. I'll drag and drop, and then I'll just find the font that I want to use. So I could just change the font. Again, I can change all the other aspects based on the toolbar up here. Now, remember how I said that um, the text is getting washed out here? Well, over on the left is elements, and they have a whole bunch of elements. We could add shapes, we could add lines, we could add icons, they have bar charts. So if you wanted to make an info infograph, you could. I'm going to grab a plain box, and that will be under shapes. And then I'll just grab the regular box here, drag and drop. So it made a black box. I want a white one. Make it white. Now, see how it's going over top of the text? The text over here says just listed. I want it behind that. So there's two options. One, I could click on the box, hit the arrange, and hit backwards. Or I could have done the same thing where I clicked on the text itself, hit arrange, and then hit forwards. So I want to move this so it goes up top like that. And then I want to change the transparency a little bit. So see how it makes the text just stand out a little bit more? Not that that's perfect design or anything, but if you have a photo and you want to add text to it, sometimes the easiest solution is just grab a box and change the transparency so that you can still see a little bit of the photo in behind it, but not all of the photo. And you could have your logo, maybe, yeah, that'd look good if I did this, just listed, and then drag and drop my logo. So drag and drop, super, super easy to use. Now, that was me showing you um, how to find business cards and use business cards. But if you do a Google search, and I want to give you this link as well, they also have templates for real estate flyers. So look at these flyers that are already done. I mean, you don't have to be a graphic designer. You can just choose the ones that are already done for you. And you'll just, so this one on the left, it says modern house for sale. And it's obviously a picture of a modern house. Well, when you choose that as a template, you can delete those photos and add your own photos. So at least that way you don't have to do the whole layout. You can just be like, well, I like that layout. I just have to change the photos and change a bit of the text. So let's find one that we like. Kind of like them all. Oh, this one's kind of cool. Look at all these already done for you. So a flyer, by the way, um, in their opinion, is a sheet of paper, 8 and a half, 11. So this is something that you could print using your own printer, or you could send it to a printer. Oh, here's a cool one for the open house. Okay, let's pick this, open house. Okay, I'm going to edit this template. So it says open house, and it's got the area and the uh, time and everything. So I would obviously want to add way more information to this. Um, over on the left, it has this Canva box. You should be able to just drag and drop your photo into, yeah. So when you upload your own photos, you can drag and drop into the box itself. So drag and drop, let go drag and drop, let go. You would obviously choose a picture of the house, a picture of the kitchen, a picture of the backyard, or whatever pictures look the best. Um, and then change the date, the time, all your information. But it is so simple to drag and drop. You can do this using your phone. I don't know if I actually like that template. Let me go back. Canva real estate flyers. I'll Google search that. And then here's the link right here, Real Estate Flyer Templates. Here, I'll do this one. This one's pretty clean and simple. Let's pick that. Uh, 
Okay, so here it's got four photos. So obviously I would want to click on the upload button. You would hit upload, upload your photos, and then drag and drop. And you're going to drag and then let go. And you'll see when it goes inside the box itself. So if I let go, it'll go in that box. you also notice that it, when I did that, it has this really weird filter. So I'm going to choose normal. But it's it's got very much like an Instagram theme. And let me show you that. I'm going to add a new page. I want to add a photo. I'll make it bigger. Okay, so say that's the photo. Say you have a photo and it's a little darker or you just need it to pop a little. If you click on the filter button up at the top left, one of the easiest things to do is just change the contrast. Pump it up a little bit. So let me do two photos, one with the filter and one without. So here's the one photo, and then I'll upload another photo. Only on this one, I'm going to change the filter a little bit. I'm going to bring the contrast up just slightly. Okay, seeing a side-by-side -side comparison, which one stands out a little bit more? The one on the bottom. So when you're doing ads on Facebook and people are scrolling, one of the easiest things you can do to help people stop and look at your ad is to have one that captures their attention. So if you have dull-looking photos, you can easily just click on the photo, hit the filter button. If you don't want to play with the uh, contrast, then you can just choose a filter, kind of like dramatic or drama or epic. This is very much like an Instagram thing. If you use Instagram, you can pick the different filters. But for me, most of the time, I'll just leave it as normal. And then I'll just bump up the contrast by like 20%. And you can see slightly the one on the bottom just has like greener grass, greener tree, bluer skies. You can actually see the bricks a little bit better. Um, it's a really good trick. Let me delete this. Okay, so let me go to this one, and we're going to change some of the elements here. So I'm going to double-click on the text. Say it's a one bathroom, two bedroom, one car garage. open house but because the font was too big it went down a little bit so the easy solution is to just change the size open house make it bold change the address So each element that they give you, you can literally click on it and move it. See that? So it's, you don't have to go to school to be a graphic designer. You can just use the templates that they already have and just modify it to be, obviously you're going to write the text about the property in here. You're going to put all your real estate information um, maybe even remove one of these photos and put your logo and all your contact information. So it kind of creates the canvas for you to play with. And that's maybe the reason why they call it Canva. Another one that I searched was uh, real estate postcards. So if I click on start designing a real estate postcard, and again, I'm going to give you this link that will automatically open up this window just like it is for me now. And on the left, On the left, look at all these postcards. It says, looking for a real estate agent. There's a picture of a girl. Um, thinking of, like, this one's really fun. Let me like, click on that. That is really cool. I mean, even though this is a postcard, it doesn't mean I have to use it as a postcard. I could easily use that um, for Facebook or Instagram or my blog, um, my website, wherever I wanted. So if you come here, just spend like an hour or two looking at all of the 
template. I don't like that one. That one's pretty cool. But then again, maybe you're like, well, I don't like the orange or blue. Well, you can just change things. Just use this as a guideline. So I could be like, well, don't do uh, orange. Do teal, if that's your thing. Let me change that. There, that looks pretty cool. So you can obviously use what they give you, but you're not constrained to it. You can change things around and, and make whatever additions that you want. So I really like this section, the postcard section. Oh. There we go. So I really like the postcard section. They have, they have really cool postcards. I mean, if you guys are looking for content to post, look at this one. That's a fun one. I like that. So obviously I would change the font to something else. Maybe not. It looks like it's written with lipstick. But um, pick and choose. Like if you want to post something on a bi-weekly basis, well, what if you just used each one of these postcards as the inspiration for your content that you create? Like this one. Uh, I bet most of you could use this one. And obviously you would change the photo. This one's a just listed card. How cool is that? just listed, change the price, change your contact information down here, uh, do a little blurb. Oh, so here's a good example. See how the text, it kind of stands out, but if I add elements, shapes, drag and drop, I want that to be in front of the box that I just created. And then change the transparency just a little bit. So by putting a transparent box in behind it, it really makes the text stand out a little bit more. Cool. So let's see what else we got. I want to show, now I want to go through and I want to show you um, some of the designs that we created, we created just listed, just sold. Um, we moved cards for the clients that moved. Uh, I want to go through and show you each one of them. I guess before I do that, I should sh continue showing you what all these options are on the left. I showed you how you could add text. You can scroll down and they've already got a whole bunch of text already designed for you. Under elements though, they have one thing that's really cool is called frames. So if I start with a new, I'll start with a new one down here. So if I start with a new one, I click on frames. What a frame is, is watch, I'll upload my photo on the left. And it's a great big rectangle, right? Now, if I use one of their frames, go back to elements, and I use this square frame, for example. Oh, I don't like that one. Hold on. This one. So now watch. When I drag and drop the photo into the frame, it crops it as a square frame. This one has this weird little thing at the bottom. It cuts it off purposely. I guess that's the design. But um, what I like about the frames is once you have something designed, not all of your photos are the same size. I don't know if you've noticed that, but you might get photos from your phone and you got photos from your photographer and you got photos from the MLS and you want to put them all on the same piece of paper, but they're all different sizes. The, one of the easiest ways to crop them is just to use the elements button and be consistent with using the same size frame. So let me show you, here is a rectangle frame. So I'm gonna drag and drop this in and it automatically placed it into the frame. So what's really cool about that is say you have a layout where it's got, um, two photos, one at the bottom right, one at the bottom left. And you always want the same white space between it. Well, instead of dragging and dropping your photo and then having to resize and like reposition, do all this stuff, once you've got your template done and saved, you can just drag and drop into the frame. So that's what the power of frames are. Let me close this. 
shapes. This is your basic elements and shapes would be your squares, your triangles, rectangles, that sort of thing, hearts. There is tons, and you can search. So say you need a certain shape, you can search what you're looking for and it will um, automatically pull it up. Shapes is really, really powerful. They also have, where's real estate? Down at the bottom, right? It says real estate. I think this is showing for me because I have the $13 version. Um, so I don't know if you're on the free version, if you actually would have this. But if you are paying the $13, you got, I think I said, 300,000 elements that you have for free. Um, so you could just find them, drag and drop. Okay, so I'm going to close that. What most of you will be able to use would be like the charts, for example. So if I click on charts. So I'll just put that one on there. Delete the photo. So this chart is pretty busy. Actually, I wouldn't use that one. It's pretty... So by clicking on the chart, you can change all of the numbers and it should change the actual chart itself. So say you did a monthly report of how many listings were. So in my area, I work Durham Region, which would be Oshawa, Whippy, Pickering, and Ajax. So I could do an easy chart that shows how many listings each city got and then collectively the percentage. And that'd be a cool little report that I could put out on my blog once a month. Um, and then I could just design it right here using Canva. So they got a whole bunch of different charts. They get really busy and crazy the further you go. Most of you will just use the ones at the top. But then there's also icons. So if I click on icons, look at all these free icons that you can use. Not all of them are real estate related, but let's just type in the word house. And then there's a tab here, it says illustrations photos, or all. I'm going to click on illustrations. Now look at all these houses that are already designed for me. So I could be like, oh, that's cool. Drag and drop. Scale it down a bit. Change the color. Teal, red, blue. Say I want to change the background. Remember I said we could change the background. So let's try something funky. Let me go back to elements. So you could do um, for sale sign, maybe. So here's some for sale signs. I could, oh, here's something to point out. Say you like this for sale sign right here. See how it's got the lines going through it and in the middle it says Canva? Whenever you see that, it means that they're going to want to charge you a dollar for that photo. So if you end up using this, you can use it in your draft and you can design with it. But if you actually go to save this as a photo to use, um, they won't let you export it unless you pay a dollar for that photo. Um, so let me delete that. Go back to for sale and I'd be like, oh, well, I'll just pick the free one then. So imagine you had a picture of a house. Here, let me add another one. Go down. Drag and drop a picture of the house. And then drag and drop the for sale sign. Oh, it's pretty cool. And then maybe I could just grab an element, go back to the top, do shapes, grab a box, and then put that behind the for sale sign extended from it.
change the transparency a bit, and then you could have your little logo, and maybe you could, oh yeah, let me go back to uh, uploads, grab a photo of me. my logo so obviously you're going to want somebody to design stuff for you um, get once you have a template you can easily now going forward you just, just have to change that photo out so it's really really cool program um, now let me show you some of the actual designs that we did up so let me go back here okay so if you want to see some of the designs we actually did, let me show you the main one I think most of you would use would be like this. This is it. Let me close these first. Um, okay, so just sold. Let's edit it. Uh, somebody asked the question, does the Canva watermark go away on postcards? Um, there is no Canva watermark on anything except for the photos that you have to pay a dollar for. So if there's a watermark on an object, it will go away if you pay a dollar for it, or delete that object and then add your own version of it. So here's a just sold postcard that we made up. Um, so it's, oh, it's just sold. Oh, I guess this is just list. This should be listed. Let me change this. That's one thing to point out is up in the middle is the name of the file. So that's like if you want to save your document, um, what's the name of the document, you could just click up here. Because when you create your first one, it automatically generates some random nonsense. So you can just click on the text and you can save it as whatever you want. When you're ready to save your, your photo, say you like the way this looks, you could just hit the download button. And... Uh, they have a couple options. I'll explain what those options are. JPEG is if you're using it on the internet. Ping is also if you're using it on the internet, like Facebook, Instagram. Most of the time you're going to use the ping, and it actually says recommended, so use that one. You would do PDF only if you want to print it. So if this is a just, a just listed postcard, for example, that you actually want to hit print, when you hit the download button, I wouldn't do a ping. I would actually do a PDF print. And you could do all the photo, all the pages, or just one of the pages, and hit download. Now, take a look at this just um, just listed card. We could have here's a, a box here for a photo, photo, photo. So, say we have a brand new listing. This template is already done for us. So, all we have to do is drag and drop, drag and drop, and you can drag and drop all the different photos of that property. So it would say just, uh, for sale, and then you could say think, thinking of selling, text sold to 905-903-5442. Us have it, adding that call to action really increased the number of people that reached out to us. So if you are doing uh, any sort of direct mail, just put it where it says thinking of buying, thinking of selling, whatever the call to action is. So thinking of whatever and then text a word that associates with what that person wants. So here we're saying thinking of selling, text sold, and then it puts my cell number. So I would randomly get people just on occasion texting me the word sold, and I knew that they came from our direct mail campaign and that they're thinking of selling. So I would text them back or call them back, and we would have a conversation about the house values and the market. So on the front side, it says thinking of selling. On the back, some people who are selling are also buying. So we have a call to action that says, thinking of buying a home, uh, daily home watcher alerts, get a list of homes that match your criteria, text home to 905-903-5442. And then we have our logo, contact information, the team photo, this photo block right here would be either a picture of myself or a picture of the team. Um, so whatever you wanna do. But I really like this design. All of these elements, like this little, phone here, we just search for a phone. Hit phone. There it is there. 
I'm like, oh, that's good, and it's free, drag and drop. Um, let me do that again. So I can tell it's free because it's got the free logo, even though it has Canva. When I drag it, you can see it's got the Canva there. I'm not going to get charged for this because before I dragged it, it told me it was free. But sometimes, let me do phone again. Free, free, free. Here's one for a dollar. So I'll drag this just so you can see. So this one here is going to charge me one dollar when I go to export it. I think if I hit export, let me just do it. Download. Uh, I don't know. At one point, it's going to say we're going to charge you a dollar for this photo. So you could um, just use your own photos. Speaking of photos, let me show you a couple of tricks. There's this one. Pixabay.com, P-I-X-A-B-A-Y.com. Um, over a million free stock photos and images that you can use. So if I just come here and type in phone and hit search, it's got all these phones. So there, that's a picture of an iPhone. You could use that. So if you liked that one, you would just click on it and then hit the free download. Lots of people use this website, totally free. You got the rights to use it, it's awesome. So if you need to find images, I suggest you use Pixabay. Um, it's not the best. I mean, you get what you pay for, it is free, but it's a lot better than a lot of the clip art that I see on the, on the open market. And it's definitely better than just going to Google because you actually do have the rights to use this. So there you go. So Pixabay is amazing. If you want something particular, uh, when you do your search, there's a drop down to the left. It says all images. And you can choose, no, I really want a photo. And then hit search. And it will only pull together all the photos. But some of you might not want a photo. You might want like an icon or something. So I would do a vector graphic. And now these are going to look like images. Like these are actually drawings. That looks pretty real. Too bad nobody uses that phone anymore. But um, here's, a ve here's a vector drawing of, of an iPhone. So if you needed a picture of a phone, uh, let me do for sale sign. So I don't really like any of those. I don't like the vectors, but let me see all images. That's pretty cool. Little picture of a house that would be a good ad see how much green <laughs> see how much negative space there is here there's a lot of room for you to add text and a call to action so you could talk about the real estate market houses house prices have changed blah 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 here's an open house one so you could just grab that for your blog so pixabay it is really good i like it especially for the price it's 100 percent free now there's a better one on the market but you actually have to pay for it let me show you, it's called Stock Unlimited. I would say 90% of the advertising that you see me do, the images come from this, Stock Unlimited. I can just come here and if I type in for sale, I don't know if they have any for sale signs, I never looked. Oh yeah, they got a couple. So here's a whole bunch of for sale signs. You could use, look how many of them there are. That's a good one. I've actually used that. You guys would have seen this in some of the designs I created for you. I would have used um, this for sale sign. So that's cool. You could just download that and use it. Now, this one is not free. Um, they have a fee. It's $169 for a three-year license. So in that three-year period of time, you can download as many images as you want. Um, so yeah, that's what I have. I have the three year plan and uh, I just, every week I'm downloading new pictures and I have them all saved in a folder. Actually, I can probably show you. Download history. Might take a while to pull this, actually. But um, you can favorite all of your favorites. You can save them. You can download them, re-download them. It is awesome. I really, really like Stock Unlimited. I'm actually going to close that because it is going to take too long. 
So I'm going to come up here and type in the word phone again. Only I want a picture of um, like a drawing. A vector is another way of saying like drawing or illustration. So look at all of these that you can download. That one's cool. I actually used that for the design we did for you guys a couple of weeks ago where we had a picture of a phone and then the house was popping out of it. We used this concept and we downloaded two different files. One was a picture of the phone, another one was a picture of the house, and then we put the two together to create a single image. So Stock Unlimited, I definitely come here and create and download a lot of the bases that I use. Uh, let me go back here. So like this picture of a house here, if you were in Canva and you typed in phone like I just did and you didn't find one for free that you like, you could go to Stock Unlimited or Pixabay to find a phone, drag and drop. Cool. So that's what we did for the uh, just listed, just sold. Let me go back to my Canva. Okay, so here's one we did for having a new address. So this is cool. Actually, let me open this up. I'll hit edit. So we create um, marketing material for our buyers and sellers after they move. So when you have uh, a client that just moved, you could either take a photo of them in front of the house holding up your sign rider or something like that, drag and drop it here, and it says, we have a new address. Down at the bottom, it would have the client's name. And then it says, a call to action, it says, thinking of moving, please contact my agent. And then it has all of our information. So we would design that, email it to our clients, and guess who's going to post it on their Facebook and Instagram? The clients. And so this is a way for us to get internal referrals and recommendations, because the moment you help a person buy a home or sell a home, you've got a couple weeks, maybe a month, and that's the highest chance that you're going to get a referral from them it drops significantly if you don't stay in touch over time. So if you're not the type to be calling your clients and following up, which you should be, um, at, the, at the bare minimum, when you have a, a successful transaction, make something like this that says, we have a new address. If you don't have a photo of them holding your sign, just put a picture of the house and then put their, their name, their, their new address. Some people get sketched out putting their address online, so make a couple versions, one that has their address, one that doesn't have their address, and they'll pick and choose the one that works right for them. Let me go back, close this. So that's really cool that we moved. Um, here's a good one, testimonials. So this, we made it look like it's an Instagram, perfect square for Instagram, but we made it look like a Google recommendation. So if we ever got any testimonials, we could just take that testimonial, retype it out into this nonsense text right here, and um, post that on Facebook or Instagram. So there's one example. Here's another example, looking up in the clouds. Here's another one, picture of a house. At the bottom right is your logo. Bottom left is all your contact info and then the testimonial that your client just gave you. That's a nice, clean, simple one. Actually, that's a really good one. You could actually print that and put it up in your office. Imagine your office had all your testimonials like this. That'd be cool. Here's another one. If you have houses that look like that in your area, that's another tip and trick is to, when you use photos, make sure they're photos that look like your area. Like you don't want a landing page that talks about house values and you don't have any palm trees in your area, but the picture on the landing page has palm trees, that's not good. Um, I mean, I would not be able to use this in my area because we don't have this style of housing in our area, but if you do, awesome. So we made a testimonial template. Uh, let me do, look who joined the team. So if somebody actually was to join our team, we would just um, have the colors that reflect our branding. So you could easily change those 
have the photo over on the left of the new team member with their name, maybe even a little description down at the bottom of who they are, where they came from, and why they're excited to be a part of your group. So look who joined the company is awesome. Um, let me do this feature sheet, and I'll actually edit this. So this feature sheet is 1117. So this is like the tabloid size. So it's bigger than an eight and a half, 11 regular piece of paper. It's basically two of them. And so let me, it's gotta take a while to load. There we go. Okay, so this is gonna be the cover on the right. On the left here is gonna be the back, okay? because we fold it. So when we fold that, that means that this is the inside. So this is the inside left, this is the inside right, this is the outside cover, this is the outside back. So on the cover we have a big photo of the house, a square picture of something like the kitchen or the laundry room or whatever looks really good. Not that laundry rooms look good, but if it did, um, whatever looks good in the square box. We have the price, we have the address, we have a uh, block of text to describe the property. We have our contact information, our logo, and then our team photo at the bottom right. On the left, it says thinking of selling. So even though this is a feature sheet, we put our feature sheets in uh, on our for sale sign. We actually put them in a box so that the neighbors can come and grab the feature sheets directly from the for sale sign. Well, a lot of neighbors don't want to move down the street. A lot of neighbors want to move. And so we have a call to action that says thinking of selling, and then it has the call to action text sold to my phone number. And then also has another call to action that says thinking of buying a home. So this back panel is all about us getting other buyers and sellers. The front cover and the inside panels are all about that property. So I definitely suggest you if you can, like I've never had any backlash. I mean, we would carry on average 16, 18 properties um, at a time, meaning we'd have 16 to 18 for sale signs out in the front yard. And I never had an issue with somebody being like, well, why are you trying to get sellers on our, on our listing? And I'm like, well, I would just explain to them, we have 16 or 18 other current listings that are all driving traffic to you as well. And uh, so I would just explain that to them. And I never once did I have a person actually angry, um, I would just explain to them the marketing behind the whole concept here. So yeah, so that's a really good example of a uh, feature sheet that we had. These are really cool. Let me open this up. Okay, first of all, let me show you what we use this for. So, um, There we go. So Avery or some other company, I don't care who you use, they all have these um, perforated business cards that you can run through your own machine. Basically, it's an eight and a half, eleven sheet of paper, cardstock, and it'll have, I don't know how, let me tell you, hold on. Ten. So these card stocks will have um, ten business cards on each card, and what we would do is on the back of we would run our business cards through these. Um, so we would have ten of our cards up on a sheet, run it through. Then when we had a home that sold, we would come in and we would make a version for them that says we moved, and we would put their property, their name, their new address. We moved picture of their property, their name, their address. So now they're handing out their business card because they're excited. They want to show all their friends and family about the new property. They, The parents definitely want to know the postal code and stuff like that. They don't even know what the postal code is. Well, now they do because we typed it all out for them. And on the back side of this We Move card was our business card. So now they're handing out our business cards to their, their friends and family. Awesome. 
I mean, I would never get business cards myself printed on the perforated cards because they're kind of jaggedy edges and not very professional. But when the clients are handing them out, it's kind of fun and quirky and it's cool. Okay, so I talked about that, that, that. Here's uh, thank you cards. So this is an eight and a half, eleven piece of paper. Let me edit it so it's bigger. And I realize the screen is really zoomed out. I can't really help that. But this is an eight and a half, eleven sheet of paper. It says thank you, and it's got these lines, and that's where we would write our handwritten note. On the bottom left is our contact information, our company logo, and then on the bottom right would be the team photo. We would have three of those stacked on one piece of paper, run those through our machine, and we would just cut them with the guillotine, and that would fit perfectly into an envelope. So if you're not in the habit of sending thank you notes, appreciation letters, or showing gratitude of any sort, you should start your day with it instead of opening the email. So I'm actually going to be talking about this next week um, on our next call is going to be about time management and uh, lead follow up. And part of that time management is uh, actually about sending out notes because it really is a big difference. If you're not doing it versus if you are doing it, it just makes you feel better. It gets you in business mode. Um, it's a good way to start the day. So if you need thank you cards, whoops. Why did that happen? There we go. Oh, that's one thing. If you make a mistake, there's an undo button. So up at the top left, if you have to do the undo button, that's awesome. You can do that. Let me, before we go, I'm going to show you from scratch. Let me go to canva.com. I want to close all these. Okay, so when you come to canva.com for the first time, this whole section underneath my mouse is going to be blank, probably because you don't have any designs. There's going to be like a picture of a monster. After you do design your stuff, however, it will keep a history of everything. So look, it's got a history of all the things I opened and showed you guys as an example, and it automatically saved the changes as I went through it. So all of your designs will be down here. So because of that, you'll have a template that you can be like, oh, we have a new homeowner. We can make a, we have a new address card for them. And you would just click on the drop down, hit make a copy, and then make your changes. If you want to start from scratch, say you don't want to use any of those template cards, template flyers, or templated business cards. Well, you can come here and start from scratch. If you click on the More button on the top right, the reason why it's called Canva is because it makes the canvas the right size of the platform that you're going to. So say I want to do a post for Instagram. I could just come here, see the word Instagram right here. An Instagram post should be 1080 by 1080. But you don't know that. A lot of people don't. Uh, maybe you do, but most people don't. And so if I wanted to do an Instagram post, I would choose that. If I wanted to do a Twitter post, I would choose this one. The Twitter is 1024 by 512. Like, what a weird number. Why would they ever make it that number? Anyways, they did. And so you can pick and choose based on the platform that you're writing. If you're going to post something on Facebook, that post should be 940 by 788. Um, scrolling down... Keep going, keep going. They have marketing materials. One of the first options is the real estate flyers. Keep on going. Social e uh, social media headers. So this is like your um, your Twitter banner or your Facebook cover. So they're all these ones are like more long and narrow, and so you can find the right size for the thing that you're actually designing. YouTube channel art. YouTube channel art is the biggest of all. 2,560 by 1,440. That is like massive. And if you don't design it that size, what ends up happening is they'll stretch it. So with Canva, Canva knows the sizes and stays up to date. So when Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube and all these things change their sizes to things, Canva stays ahead of the curve for you. Scrolling down is the other one. It says ads, 
a Facebook ad is different than a Facebook post. If you're going to post content on your business page, then you would do the Facebook post. If you were to run an ad where people click on the image and go directly to your website, then you're going to want to run a Facebook ad, and that's a different size, 1200 by 628. So let me just, um, let me choose that one. I'm going to choose that. It automatically made the canvas the size that we need it here. Um, and then this is where you could start, it's a blank canvas. So a lot of people get hung up and they freeze. They're like, oh, I don't know what to design here. That's why I like you guys using the templates first, because then you can just modify to make it fit. But what I want to show you is I'm going to do Okay, I'll just do something simple. I'll add the photo, and I'll add a little bit of text. So let me use a cool text. That's cool. When I click and hold, I want this centered on the page. So watch when I move to the left. There. See how there's a line going up and down? There's going to be a line right here when I click and hold and move it. That means it's centered. So there's some guidelines, it's pretty cool. Let me scale that down a bit, and I want it centered again. Okay, so I'm gonna say just listed. And we'll leave it like that, that's cool. Okay, so say I wanted to um, save this file, let's just pretend I like this. I would hit the download button. I want to do ping recommended and hit download. It automatically saves it to my download folder. So after you download something, you're going to be like, where did it save to? It probably saved it to your download folder. I want to hit save. If you want to rename the file, remember I told you it's up here, you just double click that. And so for me, I would say just listed. One, two, three, street name. So I'd actually name it as the name of the street. Okay, now we just downloaded that for a Facebook ad, but let's say we also want to do a Facebook post and we want to do an Instagram image. Well, the cool thing with the paid version of Canva is that if I go File, hit Magic Resize, it already has them done for me. So I can do, what did I say? I want to do Instagram. So I'll deselect these and I'll choose Instagram. And I'll hit Abracadabra Resize. It's going to open up a new tab. Make the canvas the size that it needs to be. And then it recreated it for me. Obviously, you're going to want to tweak the thing a little bit. And for this case, I would actually make that a transparent background. I'm actually going to make it bigger. This type of ad where the text is covering the whole photo, that'd be really good for like a coming soon. So say you have a coming soon or an exclusive listing, you could have the photo slightly being shown behind the background and have it say coming soon or exclusive listing. So that's cool. That's really the only reason why people pay for the paid version of it is to have that ability to resize things. So if I go file, magic resize now I'm like yeah you know what I really need to do a Twitter post abracadabra resize and it resized it for my Twitter so that's really cool that's the only reason why I say most of you need to do the paid version of it um, cool so now one thing you guys can go ahead and fail your way forward with it that's what we do I mean in everything in life you're going to spend an hour or two playing with it. But once you have your templates done and saved, you could even just pay somebody else to do it for you. Um, if you want to hire a student or somebody in your office who's good at this sort of thing, um, just say, I need a feature sheet made, I need um, a Facebook ad made, I need an uh, Instagram ad made, uh, just listed, 
just sold, open house, coming soon, like all those different versions of things. Once you have them, then it's just drag and drop. Change the photo, change the price, change the text. Save. Really, really simple. Now, we are going to be releasing um, coming up. If you do master templates, so we actually are going to be creating a bundle deal where uh, we go directly into your Canva and we design everything for you with your name, your photo, your logo, so that you don't have to do any of that. All you have to do is drag and drop the photos. If any of you guys are interested in that, let me know. It's about 90% done, um, so I haven't released it yet, but if any of you want to get be like the early birds, just send me an email, text, or call and say, hey, what's that Canva package? Um, I'll let you know about it. So are there any questions? I'm going to stop this. We're two minutes over. I'll stick around if any of you have questions or want me to show you something. Um, you're all muted, but you can unmute yourself if you want, if you'd rather talk to me verbally. And I'll just stick around for a minute, and then the rest of you are free to go. So I appreciate you all. Oh, the next call, I'll email you about the date and time. But the topic is going to be about time management and lead follow-up. So if you don't know how to ask questions, um, there's a toolbar for this chat that we're in. It says more, and it's three dots, and then chat. What will be the cost, approximate cost for the Canva package? So the cost for the package is going to be um, either $199 or $250. I, we're not too sure on that. But you're getting a lot. Let me show you. Let me go to my. Okay, so this is everything that you're going to get in that package. We're hiring, and it's going to be a Facebook and Instagram post. Uh, look who joined the team, Facebook and Instagram. We moved cards, 8 and a half, 11. Testimonial, 8 and a half, 11. Facebook and Instagram. A pre listing, 8 and a half, 11. Congratulations, Facebook and Instagram. Uh, we have a new address. That's going to be for print, 8511, Facebook and Instagram. A buyer seminar, investing seminar, client appreciation. All of them are going to be print, Facebook and Instagram. Thank you notes, open house registration, a fax cover sheet, feature sheet, a double feature sheet, just listed, just sold, open house exclusive, coming soon. And then also um, templates made up for Vistaprint. So that if you want to do your own cards and have them actually printed, um, we're going to make them the sizes for Vistaprint. So you're going to get all of that done for you with your logos, your photos, contact information directly in your own Canva account. And it's a one-time thing. And there's a question, will it follow the RICO rules? Yep, totally. All of the stuff we do. So a lot, some of the people on this webinar don't know what RICO is. Um, across the country, Canada and the States, there's different government bodies that regulate real estate, and some of them have rules. Uh, RICO is one of them, and they have rules. So yes, it, our, your information will have what RICO requires. Is it possible to have Canva create a newsletter that will be printed on the front and back of an eight and a half, eleven sheet of paper? It is. Let me go to Canva. So if okay, here that's a good good thing you asked me that. So let me come to Canva.com. So I'm going to go to Canva.com. If you want to use a custom dimension, up at the top right is custom dimensions. So here I would put um, inches, width would be uh, 8.5, height would be 11 inches, and hit design. It's going to create a blank 8.5, 11 sheet of paper for me. So you would have, this would be the front. Let me pick a, um,
Where was there? Oh, okay. Anyways, forget it. I was looking for something else. So whatever it is that you're going to design and and design up, say this is the cover of this page. So I'll just add um, an icon of a house. And I want it to be an illustration. And we'll just use this one. Okay, so let's say that's your, and you've obviously got your text above, your photos, your logo, all of that. What you're going to do is hit add a new page, and it created a new page. You can also make a copy of a page too. So there, I just made a copy of it, and I'll delete this one. So now I have a two-page document. I can tell because it says two. So when I'm ready to print whatever you're designing, you would hit download, change this to print PDF and you're going to choose all pages and that will make a PDF and then you'll be able to open it up on your computer and hit print and it will print double sided depending on your printer settings obviously. Perfect. Okay, I'll keep every all of you will get posted when that package becomes available. Yep. And I think I just answered your question on the printing. Cool. Okay. This is, oh, while you're, do, say you print this off um, as a PDF, I would also make a copy of it as a ping. That way you can post it online as well. Yep, no problem. Cool. Okay, I want to um, pull up my email. So my email and phone number is here. Um, I want to hang up the webinar, but if you're in the middle of typing a long question and I end it, I'm sorry, but uh, you do have my email, so you can just uh, send me a private email or text or call anytime, and I'll keep you guys posted on the next date. Thanks, everyone. Hey, if you want to close more real estate transactions, get more buyer leads, and get more seller leads, click this button right here. It'll take you to our real estate group coaching page. Also, if you like this video and want more, you can subscribe by pressing this, or you can check out some of my past videos here. Enjoy!